come out and say what he wants, but hugging and doing star jumps in the ring does not win a fight. Um, and he can go on and about how he was robbed, but it was his show, his officials, his judges. So he's saying that your own people that you employed they robbed you. Listen, boxing's a fair sport. I went in there, tried to make a fight out of it, but it's very hard to fight someone who doesn't want to fight. In fact, you did even better than we first thought, didn't you? Because it was, a, it was given as a majority verdict by the judges. In fact, it was unanimous. There was a, a screw-up on the scorecards, wasn't there? Yeah, definitely. Um, on the night, it was a majority decision, but um, just in the last 24, 48 hours, it was, um, it was made clear that it was a unanimous decision through one of the scorecards being added up wrong, which is good, and I'm glad the judges scored it how it was meant to be scored. There was one guy in there putting the pressure on, setting the higher work rate, trying to make a fight out of it because it is a boxing match. It's not a running track. It's not an athletics track. Star jumps don't win fights. Well, it's interesting you say that because people might be wondering who didn't see the fight, what you mean when you say star jumps don't win fights. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason that you say that, I presume, is because KSI is not a, a professional boxer. That's not his... That he's not his main job. He's a YouTuber. So he gets criticised for not acting like a boxer in the ring. But this was all part of his Misfits uh, series where, you know, originally non-boxers, YouTubers are put up against boxers. Is it not your, on you that you chose to take part in that? No, definitely not. At the end of the day, if these YouTubers want to come into professional boxing, they better learn how to box and not do star jumps and run around the ring and start hugging people. You know, I feel like the fight on Saturday night was very scrappy. It made me look bad in the process. But at the end of the day, he should have stood there and had a fight. I do believe the referee was heavily in favour of him as well, as he should have been warned about the holding. He should have been made to stand and fight and not run around the ring all night and, and hug. Um, but at the end of the day, it's his promotion, it's his card. Everything was according to him. And I still went out of there and got a job done, even with a point deduction, I still won. So I must have won very clearly, and I do believe I have watching it back. We know that you're super confident, uh, um, just to your, to your bones, basically. But did you have any misgivings before the fight that you were taking actually quite a professional risk here? You were, you were fighting not another boxer, but a YouTuber. And just supposing he had one, I mean, supposing he'd landed a lucky punch and, and put you on the canvas. I mean, that would have been your reputation up in smoke, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, fighting these guys every single time is a big risk. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the world that we're in. You know, this is what people's into right now. And why not give the fans what they want to see? Um, you know, as you can see by the pay-per-view buys that I supposedly did, it was a sold out at Manchester Arena. The fight sold out itself within a couple of hours. This is what the public wants to see. Um, I don't know if they want to see the, the star jumps and the hugging, but they definitely <laughs> want to see the matchups and that's what they're going to get. You're sticking to the star jumps and hugging line, aren't you, Tommy? <laughs> so can, can we assume that you're ruling out a rematch? Listen, at the end of the day, me, I'm enjoying some family time now. Me and my team are going to get around the table in, in about a month's time or something like that, and we're going to decide which is the, re the best route to take next. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see because that was a horrible... It was a horrible fight to be a part of. He didn't want to fight. He didn't want to stand there and, and give the fans a good fight. He just wanted to make it awkward and, and look horrible and run around the ring for six rounds, and it's very... Very irritating for someone like me who wanted to get in there and have a proper fight. So uh, I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll assess what's next and we'll go, okay. we'll go from there. Sounds like the option is still open. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, how's Molly May getting on? Because, you know, everybody can watch this slightly dispassionately, <clears throat> but she's your fiancé and she's the mum of your baby. And I just wonder how that changes how she views you boxing. Yeah, I mean, first of all, she's doing great, um, but... You know, on the fight on Saturday night, I think she genuinely watched the whole thing through the floor. She didn't look up for the floor once. And at the end of the day, <laughs> it is what it is. I can understand it. You know, she's my fiance. I'm, I'm the father to our beautiful baby daughter. And she doesn't want to see me in there taking punches. Um, so I understand where she's coming from. But she tolerates it because she knows how happy it makes me. She knows that without boxing, my, my tick doesn't tick. So, um, you know, I need boxing <laughs> in my life. So she understands that. And you had to move out of home, didn't you, for the training? Because, well, explain to the, to the viewers why that is. Yeah, I, I, I removed myself from home, um, all, all the comforts of home life. Um, I've been seeing Molly and the baby once a week for the past 10 weeks. Um, it's been so tough. But at the end of the day, I can't switch from being a super dad, a cuddly dad, you know, cuddly fiancé, you know, giving kisses and cuddles out to then 
a few hours later go into train and they're wanting to rip someone's head off, it's very difficult to get yourself out of out of those different spaces. So I thought removing myself so I could solely concentrate on the fight and the task at hand was needed. So that's the reason why I moved out. That's interesting. So you're saying that, that once, you've, once you've done whatever training schedule you've, you've got for the day, you're so pumped up, you're so adrenalised up, you just wouldn't be a very good dad or a very good partner. I think it's, I think it's tough because I don't like to balance um, you know, home life, family life with my job. I keep them both completely separate because at the end of the day, nothing, becomes, nothing comes before my family and home life. So at the end of the day, it wouldn't be fair to my family coming through the door with just a fight on my mind. And that's all you need when you're in training camp. So I prefer to go away and focus on the fight and come back after the training sessions and just think about the fight constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How old are you now, Tommy? I'm 24. Believe so, it or not, I look about 54. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to ask, how, how, long, how long do you give yourself in the game? Um, it's really hard to tell. I mean, at the day, I didn't see me taking these fights. Um, you know, these fights, are, they're great financially. So uh, I'm not too sure, but I, I do, I do want to achieve what I want to achieve in the sport. And then I'll bow out and then I'll be on to the next venture. And what will you do after you've left the ring? I don't know. Hollywood, baby. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Is that what you're after? <laughs> well, you got the fan yeah, base for so, it. Yeah, maybe so. Why not? I believe. I, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I can do anything when I put my mind to it. You know, I believe there's nothing in this world that we can't do if we have the right mindset and belief to go forward with it. So after boxing, I feel like there's a few ventures out there that I'm interested in, and I'm looking to take them all because we only get one shot at life, and I believe in doing the most while we can while we're here. Well, our viewers love you. I can tell you that mm. uh, they absolutely love you. So uh, if, you do, if you do it. start making films, they'll be they'll be they'll be renting them out on can the weekend. Can I before we let you <laughs> before we let you go, tell me when's the wedding? Ah. Oh, guys, I'm sure you guys will find out. Don't worry about that. You always do. Um, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we've talked about it. It's been a few conversations, but I'm sure when the time comes around, I think everybody in the whole world will know quick, very quickly. I just noticed keeping your guard up. <laughs> yeah, oh, you can say that again. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, Tom. good luck. Have you got your first dance song yet? We were, we were wondering what it might be. Oh, yeah, we've already got that. I mean, I think we discussed that the first time we met. Um, it's going to be very different, but at the end of the day, all to be revealed, guys. There's a lot to look forward to, but I want to thank everybody for staying tuned with us, uh, for keeping up with us. We love you all. We respect you all. And uh, without you guys, none of, none of our lives will be possible. So thank you very much. Aww. All right. Well, thank you. And congratulations on your win. Yeah. Your unanimous win. Thank you and God bless. Yeah. Aww, Tommy, yes. thanks so much. And all, <laughs> all the best to Molly May and Bambi as well. Great to see you. Thank you. God bless.